first of all, how are you going to replace 97 journalists? You cannot uh, keep up with that kind of an attrition rate. It's just simply impossible. There, there aren't that many qualified, uh, trained journalists to even uh, work in, in that area. Hey everybody, Mark Taylor Canfield here for the MTC Report here in the recording studio in Seattle. Hope you're all doing well. I'm here to talk to you today about some very upsetting news coming out of the Middle East, of course, and specifically about the deaths of journalists in Gaza. The Israeli-Gaza war has been the most dangerous conflict for journalists uh, since the Committee to Protect Journalists began keeping records on this kind of thing 30 years ago. That, according to Jody Ginsburg, who's the executive director uh, for the Committee to Protect Journalists. And as executive director for Democracy Watch News, my job is to uh, report on the imprisonment and deaths of journalists worldwide and threats to freedom of the press. Well, we're seeing a lot of that right now in Gaza. Um, as of today, 97 journalists and media workers are confirmed dead. 92 uh, Palestinian, 2 Israeli, and 3 Lebanese. 16 journalists uh, are reported injured, 4 journalists are missing, and 25 were reported arrested. Now, uh, the Committee to Protect Journalists points out that this list does not include journalists and media workers who have also been subjected to multiple assaults, threats, cyber attacks, censorship, and killings of their family members, and also destruction of their news offices. So this is a very uh, untenable and um, impossible situation right now in Gaza for journalists. First of all, how are you going to replace 97 journalists? You cannot, uh, you cannot uh, keep up with that kind of an attrition rate. It's just simply impossible. There, there aren't that many qualified, uh, trained journalists to even uh, work in, in that area, area um, because so many have been killed. And of course... Out of the 97 journalists who have been killed, 92 have been Palestinian journalists. So, bottom line, you're not going to get a lot of reporting from Gaza when most of the journalists are dead. Or at least that many journalists are dead, okay? Um, it's been a real sticking point um, for a long time. Uh, access by journalists and access... Um, two war zones and two conflicts and to the front lines from my reporters ever since uh, the Vietnam War when General Westmoreland, you know, just stopped allowing reporters to be up on the front lines in, in the conflict. Uh, until Walter Cronkite came along and somehow got up there and they ended up talking to a bunch of really young GIs with peace signs on their helmets, smoking grass and listening to Jimi Hendrix wondering why the heck they were there. Um, that was one of the turning points of the public uh, opposition to the war, by the way. So journalists have uh, an important role to play, of course, in society and in war zones especially. But if they uh, are you know, being killed and the casualty rate is so high and you cannot, cannot replace that many people, then, of course, the reporting is going to suffer and there are going to be many things happening that you're not going to hear about and it's not going to be reported. And that is a real shame. There are already human rights atrocities happening, and you know now, because there's so few journalists there, uh, you may not hear about some of them. It's a very sad situation, and something that uh, every journalist, every publisher, every editor in the country, and as from my point of view, every member of Congress and every candidate for office should be speaking about. But unfortunately, we do not hear this story in corporate mainstream media. Uh, you've heard my presentations before, perhaps, about 
the limitations of media monopolies in the United States and corporate media ownership. I testified before the Federal Communications Commission on this issue, brought up some research that the FCC itself had commissioned, which had found um, at major universities, by the way, in the United States, that found that increased uh, media, corporate media ownership consolidation, decreased local news coverage, limited BIPOC and female ownership of media, and in other ways had negative effects. So the FCC, by the way, after I brought up those reports uh, at the hearing, uh, claimed they didn't know anything about these reports that they themselves had commissioned. I believe that uh, Senator Barbara Boxer later got involved with that issue because of uh, these these uh, revelations that came out during the hearings. But I, I interviewed some professors who said that they would never work for the FCC again because they felt like administrative law had actually been violated and that their research had been suppressed by the FCC. Research which showed the negative effects of corporate media ownership and continued media monopolies or increasing media monopolies. However, there have been certain members of the FCC, mostly Republicans, by the way, uh, who have voted continually over and over again uh, to allow more and more media uh, ownership, corporate media consolidation and uh, monopolies. So that you have just a few media companies owning most of what people see and hear these days. And also some very powerful figures between, behind some major social networking platforms which are very influential in the country as well and also do uh, a lot of aggregate news or, uh, sharing. So I just want you to know that right now um, the situation in Gaza is totally untenable and unsustainable for journalists and it needs to stop. There needs to be a ceasefire. Journalists uh, should not be a target, by the way either by police during protests or by uh, military in war zones. So the Committee to Protect Journalists has a hashtag campaign out there and it's the hashtag is not a target. Um, and they are just saying that journalists cannot be and should never be a target in, in areas of conflict. By the way, um, by the way, um, the Committee to Protect Journalists is investigating numerous unconfirmed reports of other journalists uh, being killed, missing, detained, injured or threatened, and of damage to media offices and to the journalists' homes in that area and the conflict between Israel and Gaza. So it's really a serious situation for journalists there. I mean, you have to have a lot of guts to even want to go into that theater. Um, Committee to Protect Journalists um, approached along, well, this is what the, this is their report. The Committee to Protect Journalists says, quote, the Israel Defense Forces told Reuters and Agence France Press news agencies in October that it could not guarantee the safety of their journalists operating in the Gaza Strip. After they had sought assurances that their journalists would not be targeted by Israeli strikes, according to a Reuters report. Journalists in Gaza face particularly high risks as they try to cover the conflict during the Israeli ground assault, including devastating Israeli airstrikes, disrupted communications, supply shortages, and extensive power outages. Not to mention lack of basic supplies and food. Um, because the reporters are suffering right along with everyone else there and in terms of resources because of the restrictions um, placed on humanitarian aid, etc. Um, so the Committee to Protect Journalists emphasizes that journalists are civilians doing important work during times of crisis and they must not be targeted by warring parties, said... Um, said Sharif Mansour, CPJ's Middle East and North Africa uh, program coordinator. Quote, journalists across the region are making great sacrifices to cover the heartbreaking conflict. Those in Gaza in particular have paid and continue to pay an unprecedented toll and face ex 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 uh, 
and face exponential threats. Many have lost colleagues, families, and media facilities, and have fled seeking safety when there is no safe haven or exit. So you can go to the Committee to Protect Journalists, cpj.org, and get all of this information. Uh, they keep constant updates. They're a great organization. They're doing stellar work in this field. Uh, my, my hat's off to you folks for what you're doing to try to educate the public and, and let people know what's going on there. Um, I would say that it's one of the most censored stories in the United States, what's happening to journalists there, along with the fact that the United States is currently ranked 45th, yes, 45th in the world in terms of press freedom by Reporters Without Borders on their current World Press Freedom Index. But you can um, get more information about that in my previous MTC report. Uh, as it is, this is one of the items that I briefed uh, our U.S. Uh, representative, my member of Congress and friend, Pamela Jayapal, on is what's happening to reporters in Gaza. And I'm hoping that she will speak to other members of Congress and that they will speak out about what's happening there and try to stop the killing of journalists in Gaza because it's atrocious. As I said, you cannot sustain an attrition rate like this. It's impossible. You cannot replace all those people. So uh, journalism will suffer and the public at large will suffer because they will not have access to information about what's really going on there. And it's really sad. It's very sad. Um, but this is the situation as of today. Hopefully it will improve very soon. This is Mark Taylor Canfield. Um, don't be afraid to, you know, write editorials about this. Talk to your members of Congress and political representatives. Um, bring it up during talk shows on radio and television and just let people know what's going on because this is not going to be reported by mainstream media for the most part folks they're not going to tell you about this you have to go to alternative sources and in some areas of the country people are just not used to doing that and so they just you know tune into the same tv or radio station all day uh, you have to seek out this information because it's not going to be delivered to you on a silver platter by the corporate news networks not only do they not want to report that they're ranked 45th in the world in terms of press freedom by Reporters Without Borders, they also don't want to talk about what's happening in Gaza, So, when it comes to reporters especially. So this is Mark Taylor Canfield for the MTC Report. I hope you're, you're doing well despite the, the, this terrible news from the Middle East. And uh, just remember that freedom of the press is an international issue. It's you know, obviously not just in one country or another. And as journalists, we should all stand up for our brothers and sisters and others around the world who are fighting for freedom of the press and freedom of expression and um, helping to educate people and, and uh, tell the, the real story. This is Mark Taylor Canfield for the MTC Report. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and click that button down there and uh, hit the bell too so that you can get notifications every time I do a new video. I appreciate everybody who supports me. Um, I don't ask for you know any ad revenue or anything for these videos. This is uh, in, done for the public interest and uh, uh, for public benefit. So I hope you all appreciate it and um, share the video. You know, click the like button. That helps a little bit. Get you know, uh, the more that uh, you help get these videos out there, the more YouTube is is going to like that algorithm and give me more chances to reach people. So thanks so much for checking out the MTC report. I hope you're all doing well. This is Mark Taylor Canfield for the MTC report.